Yeah. Hello, everyone. So welcome back to the School Synergy Seminar Part 2 for uh, Statistical Thinking and Data Analysis. The first part of this session was uh, done by Bindu Thirumalai last week, and uh, she facilitated the session in a very interesting way, uh, showing us a few activities that can be done uh, based on statistical thinking and uh, data analysis. In this session today, we are going to discuss your ideas, your experiences, uh, which you think you can use uh, in your own classroom or have already used and you want to share the uh, reflection of that experience itself. So this is an important part of the School Synergy Workshop Series and we want uh, more and more teachers to participate uh, in this part of the session. Although we know that more teachers participate in the first part, uh, but we think that this is an important uh, part in which the, you as teachers get to be designers of the curriculum itself. So uh, today in this uh, uh, session, uh, Aruna had already shared her uh, ideas on the Telegram group and I invite her to uh, share it here in front of all of us and we will uh, discuss it uh, forward. Aruna, are you ready to share? Should I make you, I'll, let me make you co-host. No, that's all right. I am just speaking what okay. I have shared on the group. Okay, fine. Uh, fine. Go ahead. So do you want me to share the document also? I thought it would be good for uh, people to see that. Uh, that's why I, I had suggested. Yeah. So I've made you the co-host. You can uh, do that. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I uh, taught at taught life skills at a school in Munar for 10 years. And uh, uh, I was always very interested that the students learn to apply what they learn in my classes in uh, all the other subjects that they were learning and in their everyday lives. So, uh, uh, you know, as part of school routine, we are supposed to have a test and uh, uh, we used to have a 25 mark test and uh, like children will be children. Uh, uh, as soon as they get their mark papers, they used to ask me, ma'am, who's, who's come top? And uh, uh, you know, has everybody passed? And, so, and, and I really didn't see uh, how passing and failing relates to life skills because uh, uh, I don't think the two go together. So however, uh, uh, this is what I used to do with, with the uh, data that used to uh, get generated from my life skills test. And uh, 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 in response to those questions, we used to uh, uh, blackboard. So, uh, and, and it used to be to, uh, as much student participation as possible. So the students will decide what they want to plot on the X axis, what they want to plot on the, uh, what data they want to denote on the Y axis. So uh, we decided that, okay, number of students will be on the uh, uh, X axis and uh, will be on the Y axis. And uh, the uh, data was plotted on the uh, board. And uh, it, it gave the children a chance to look at the data visually and compare it with their one point and see where in the graph they like. And uh, uh, so, so they can look at it uh, as a whole. They can look at it in comparison with their performance. And uh, uh, the next step was when we plotted the marks for the other section also. And then we had to sit and compare which class has done better. So if uh, one student uh, in class section A has got 24 marks and one student in section B has got uh, 22 marks, uh, does that necessarily mean section A is done better? Or if more students have got higher uh, percentage uh, marks, will that decide this class has done better. So uh, uh, it, it was a very lively class and, and uh, uh, children went back to their textbook, which is what I really like that if they are not understanding the uh, conversation that is happening in my class, 
uh, they know which textbook to go to to they know which uh, where the information the relevant information can be uh, revised and then come back to my class and and uh, uh, apply that learning in context to my life skills uh, uh, data here so that was what i did thanks a lot aruna for sharing your experience so um i just want to open this up to other participants also if in case they want to ask any questions or uh, bindu would you like to uh, also comment yeah sure okay. uh, yeah um i i will turn off my video though i'm really sorry it's okay i apologize yeah yeah it's okay so um so one thing excellent about this is that you created a context like i said um anything about data handling is about giving the students a context and um, uh, you really give them a context because this was their own curiosity and uh, and pointing to um, you know i and uh, looking at a graphical representation of data and um, and also asking questions very much that would interest them in their context and uh, and what is interesting is also that it's not a math class it's a life skills class and uh, like i had said last time um, data handling the topic of data handling and statistics is the best uh, topic in um, um you know in mathematics classes to integrate with other uh, topics in uh, in the school and uh, what it also is is um um you know it gives them um, a sense of that i can use my mathematics in in everyday context and make connections like you said with the textbook uh, so that is very interesting um what i want you to think about is the questions you asked uh one definitely you see a, a comparison right so we discussed this looking at the data looking between yeah. the data uh so looking behind the data and looking ahead of the data right so um do you feel that you've uh, your questions that you've asked have covered all these aspects um what do you think uh, were you able to um you know or, or would you be able to ask more questions now thinking about the data this way uh, you know uh, would you uh, change your questions in any way thinking about these aspects of the data i would definitely like to be able to ask a, a lot more interpretative questions uh, you, you know uh, that go beyond uh, directly interpreting what is what the graph shows Uh, um but uh, in in a 40 minute class uh, considering that there were students at all levels no those who are only able to directly interpret the information uh, those who find it difficult to uh, uh, visualize the data and uh, understand what exactly you know for example uh, when we were trying to calculate the mean mean scores uh getting the formula or getting the uh, idea about how to use each point on the graph and use that to calculate the mean uh, uh, score at, uh, achieved by the class uh, was something that the children had to put a lot of thought into so uh, but i would definitely like to be able to ask a lo lot more of uh, interpretative uh, questions because it is class 7 right. i think they should be able to do it absolutely yeah and i, I think i was very uh, pleased to hear that you know they went back to their math books and uh, it's a very interesting i would never have imagined such an experience being shared thank you thank you so much for sharing this uh, ruchi would you um, yeah i'm facilitating further yeah yeah it's okay i understand your situation 
Yeah, so uh, thanks Aruna for sharing uh, this situation, uh, uh, this uh, experience. Uh, and I would also uh, ask other participants to share your uh, uh, introduction, introduction as, as well as, as, you know, any experience that they have had uh, with statistical uh, thinking, data analysis, or any activity design that they have developed on their own. Sandhya, would you like to speak? Okay, is this the first time you are attending the session? Sandhya, yes. No, ma'am, it's my third session. Okay. Uh, so you have interest in teaching mathematics, but uh, you haven't, uh, I mean, uh, right now. I think, no, no, I teach in Hindi, but I'll um, interest and all things. No, you are okay. speaking uh, different types of knowledge. So I want. Okay listening everything okay okay thanks so okay let's go to chitra chitra i don't know uh, you were there uh, last week anything you want to share any experience you want to share good afternoon ma'am uh, yes afternoon. i was there last year and uh, but uh, i could not uh, do much because uh, we are into the final we the children have gone for the summer break so we were completely occupied in all that so uh, teaching has not been done as much. So, yeah. no, the children are still settling down. So, from June okay. month, we will start. So Do you have any idea uh, for uh, activity for statistical thinking or uh, data uh, analysis? Uh, yes, ma'am. Like last year, I remember uh, ma'am has shown some color stick, something was there. Some yes, lollipops. The popsicles. popsicles. Lollipops. Yes. So, uh, you know how we can incorporate other subjects, like we can use that color stick, like a rainbow color. So, uh, like the color numbers, the colors comes as per the layer in the rainbow. So, we can use such type of popsicles and we can take as many numbers in which color so we can use this data when the bar graph will come or that will come so we can show the statistical data also and like other subject the rainbow colors identification of colors in the rainbow that okay. was but other things i still have to work on uh, okay. and whatever uh, whatever the takeaway will be definitely i'm going to incorporate that in my classes at present i have not prepared so, it's okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, Dr. Ajit, would you like to introduce yourself and share any experience? Dr. Ajit? Uh, Swapnali, Swapnali Bendre, would you like to speak? Hello, maybe they are not able to hear. Okay, so uh, in case other people do not have uh, ideas, what we can do is right now we can try uh, developing some ideas for teaching uh, uh, statistical thinking and data analysis. So what we will do right now, uh, I think Vindu will also join, uh, be able to get to a place in a better uh, network. But what we will do right now is I'll give you five to five uh, minutes and you have to go on internet itself, Google and identify any, uh, I would say bar graph that you feel that you feel you can use in a mathematics classroom and would be an interesting bar graph to show to them. Okay. So uh, is it possible for everyone? All you have to do is to uh, go to Google, you can either type news bar graph, or you can type bar graph and some topic there and see if you can find some interesting bar graph that you can use in the classroom. Uh, also, and what are the uh, yes, sir. Uh, also from the uh, not only for Google, we can uh, use the newspapers also. Yes, so... we can you you can use today's newspaper also any data any statistics that is given there you can, um, you know, take a photo of that and you can uh, post it in the telegram group, our uh, school synergy teachers forum telegram group and we can discuss that also so I'll give you five minutes for five minutes. Um, I'm going to mute myself. 
and whatever you find, you can post it on a uh, telegram group and we will discuss it from there. I'll share the screen. Whatever you will share on uh, telegram, I'll share it here and we will discuss it further. We'll discuss what kind of questions we can ask on that. Is this okay, Bindu? Yeah. This is better. Yeah, so this is uh, uh, given by Chitra. No, not Chitra. This is by Sandhya. Huh. This is by Sandhya uh, Trembake. Okay. So Sandhya, what do you understand from this graph? Would you like to speak, please? Uh, two terms and uh, two teams, uh, different types of subjects and uh, how to the uh, percentage to so explain it to uh, English, Maths, Hindi and Science and SST. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Chitra, what and can you ask? What this you is Sandhya. This? Huh. Sorry, Sandhya. Hmm. If you show this graph to your classroom, what is it that you can, what are the kinds of questions you can ask, uh, which are thinking questions for your students? Imagine yeah. you show this graph um, and if you don't show the table, okay, just show the graph. What are the kinds of questions you can ask your student? Mm. First, I ask ma'am, mm, uh, which color? Which can color? Yes, ah. yes, we can hear ah. you. Which color? Which colors in the different percentage of the topics? You can speak in Hindi if, or any other language if you are comfortable. Okay. Um, ah. So, may I uh, sorry, uh, may I have a character to come subsepale? He may own Koye Puchungi, he can't say color make it not percentage hai. Yane English hai to can't say percentage may who I hai sixty seventies. So, you have a ye puchu or color can subsepare percentage. Color say subsepare percentage. Percentage puts the pushkin, the key color, Bahape for a problem hojaga. I think up ko ye be batana perigana, okay, hurry, the key. Physics, uh, ये जो English है पहला वाला, या पहला English जो है, उसमें दो color दे रखे हैं, right? जी, yes. हाँ, तो वो पहला color क्या denote करता है, पहले तो ये समझ में आना चाहिए ना, दो color का percentage yeah. पूछने से पहले yeah. आपको ये पूछना चाहिए कि वो color denote क्या करता है, क्या किसको प्रतिबिंब किसको uh, क्या बोलेंगे represent कर रहा है हाँ represent कर रहा है यस टर्म वन को represent कर रहा है टर्म टू को represent है यस हाँ दोनों में से किसे represent कर रहा है ये पहले पूछेंगे और फिर यहाँ पर हम इसके बाद हम ये पूछेंगे मैम O to Y जो O यहाँ zero सो याने ten to hundred ये दिया गया है सो ये यहाँ पर उनको हम पूछ सकते हैं so, here we can ask, which one of the highest is the highest? Which one of the highest is the highest? We can ask the kids. Or the second term, which is the highest is the highest? Yes, that is a good Our question. Yes. Yes. That is a good question. But uh, generally, what you must do is, like Ruchi said, first you must see if they are able to identify and tell you what this graph is about. It's a good graph you've selected, right? Because even without that table and those, uh, if you remove all that explanation and just give this graph, then first you can ask them, what do you think this graph is about? First question you should ask is, what do you think this graph is about? You can make a guess, no? Because it's up till 100 on the, and it says marks, then it says subjects, then it says, yes. then it also tells you what is first term, what is second term. So just describing the graph is the first level when we say, uh, when we talked last week, right? Think of the four levels we spoke about. Like describing is the first level. So here you can, uh, you can use um, this graph to just to see if all your uh, students know how to read a graph. 
Okay, so then you can ask, what is, uh, like you said, what, what do the green bars denote? What do the pink bars denote, right? Then they will say it yes. probably denotes first term, second term, they should recognize the legend there. Then you should ask on the uh, X axis, what, what does it denote? What does it denote on the Y axis? Though it is very obvious, you must ask these such questions, very basic questions. Then it was good that you asked the question, who got the highest marks in the first term? And uh, I mean, what was the highest marks in the first term? And uh, in which subject, right? Or what was the highest marks, the lowest marks? Or you yes. can, you know, compare. Uh, Percentage-wise comparison. What are the other questions that you can ask? I think Midlu has gone. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry. sorry. I didn't realize uh, my. Uh, you were on mute. Yeah. Yeah, I think by mistake I pressed mute. So the, you can ask very direct questions just to understand if your students are reading the graph. Now, your next level is about being in, able to analyze some things, compare and analyze some things. What is, uh, you also asked about highest and lowest. What other things can you ask in this, which is little more indirect, which they can infer from? Anybody else can also answer. Yes, anybody else wants to uh, make any question? Ma'am, uh, it can be said that uh, how many students are, uh, have got um, above 80%? Hmm. How will you find that? How because you, your question is how many students? Do you think that can be found here? How many students have got above eighty percent? So usually it represent like a class of students. What does it represent? The graph. Yes, uh, voice is breaking for me. I don't know if it is my computer issue, my network issue. Sandhya, can you confirm? No, ma'am. No, your voice is clear, but I nahin, think. Uh, uh, ma'am, unka network issue. Ho sakta hai, maybe. Yeah, please go ahead. Please uh, go ahead. So, ma'am, uh, after this, uh, identifying which term one, like green for term one and term two, we can also ask, like, in term one, which is the subject where students, students have scored highest and lowest? Same in term two also. And then what is the difference? How much if uh, in the first term, what is the difference in first term and second term comparing subjects, each subjects, the differences, which subject uh, they have scored in, in first term. In which subject there is the uh, As, yes. biggest difference in first term and uh, this, uh, yes. in comparison to the first uh, term. Yes. Yes. So in first term, comparison between all the subjects, highest and lowest, and in term two, again, comparison between all four sub, all five sub, mm -hmm. five subjects, and then third will be the comparison between each subject in term one and term two. Mm -hmm. Like suppose English subject, term one, how much score, term two, how much score, whether it is the performance is go grown up or gone down hmm. so uh, or also uh, that is for teachers reflection yeah but uh, if you are using this in the maths classroom you can also ask students also that you know what is the change in the performance of the student in comparison yes to the uh, first term yes so uh, Ruchi, right? i want to go back to the uh, somebody said number of students Okay. Can yeah. you really make out the number of students? What would this value be 
like when when we're saying 67 what could it possibly denote that would be the average can you make out the number of no? students no sorry no we cannot make out the number of students number so of students what, what could it perhaps uh, uh, denote this number so say for english there is uh, 60 seven in the first term and 70 in the second term what what is that what could that uh, value denote marks, a, marks, yes, marks. it is mentioned Mark. marks out of 100 whose marks uh it's a overall average average of yes. the class yes average yes. yes so you can infer that it's perhaps they're talking about a class's performance average so performance. it is just one uh, average number of the class right so in on average, so what could be one interesting indirect question you could ask is, is there any subject in which uh, on average students have done uh, worse in the first uh, in the, in second, the second term, term as compared yes, to the first, the term. first term? You know, and, and you could have a discussion on that. What could be the possible reasons? Right? What would the answer be to that? Hindi and uh, because it is a language, probably marking in languages is not as no, but uh, that objective. is compared to the first term, you're saying to the second term, they've done worse. So what right. could happen? Uh, it, it is not the subject, right? It is what could be wrong that they've done worse in the second term. Okay. Hmm. The paper could be difficult. Yeah, so so you, paper could be difficult. Maybe the teacher is not teaching very well mm. in the second term. <laughs> Maybe children have lost interest for some reason. So you must see how people reason with data, right? So the reasoning also matters and how you read the data. So now you're understanding how uh, description of data itself is a very important thinking activity in uh, statistical thinking yeah and it is not possible to find the number of students you know who have got more than 80 uh, here because we do not know the total number of students in the class here right this information is not there so all we can discuss uh -huh. so all we can discuss is the comparison of students performance based on the averages that are given, but we cannot find out the number of students who have scored above 80, for example, right? For that, we need an information ki total students kitne the, wo hai hi nahi hai. Let's see other graphs also, okay, which were posted. Uh, uh, just a minute, uh, if I may add, Yes. Uh, uh, since we were talking about uh, 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 in one subject that has been a fall in performance in term two, uh, but that fall is not a very large uh, gap, right? Yes. So maybe have a, a more subjective descriptions about uh, how much of a gap would be a significant gap. Okay, the you know, performance has really deteriorated and is worrying or this much of variation is all right. You yeah. Know? So in, I mean, in higher level, uh, the statistical thinking, we do discuss the significance of the difference. You know, uh, maybe not at the school level, but I think in uh, uh, higher level mathematics, we definitely discuss that. And in that, you know, you any difference, you cannot say that, you know, uh, there is a, it, right? yeah. it is really a significant difference because that difference could have happened by chance. Right. You know, the kind of chance factors we were discussing right now that it could be the paper, it could be the teacher, it could be the environment, it could be that there was a COVID wave at that time. So it, those besides those chance factor, if this difference is significant or not, it can be calculated using a formula. For, uh, yes, the yes. t-test and all that. Right? The t-test and the t-test formula. And for that also, we would need some more uh, information perhaps. Uh, so, but, uh, right. even, yeah. yeah, so but even uh, your suggestion is very good actually. When you're having a discussion about the reasons, mm -hmm. right? Uh, a very good uh, discussion would exactly be this. If somebody said the teacher was bad, you could ask, yeah, yeah. can you make such a, a such an inference if the difference is only three marks, 
right or right. whatever the marks is it's, it's a very small difference it's a three uh is it a three mark i can't see here wait five percent or so right so i mean are, yeah it's, it's a about difference of seven percent it's a so, difference of seven percent decline seven percent from the table you can make out seven yes. points of uh, decline so you can ask what are the reasonable uh, reasons why there is a seven percent decline so exactly so um, that's a very good point you brought up that you have to really look at the data closely and see when you do these things like Ruchi was saying, as you go on to more formal statistical techniques, right? Uh, you use formulas and you use mathematical modeling to get these, whether it's significant or not. But if you are able to uh, get this concept in very simple graphs like this, then students will find it easy to understand the concepts of significance and all that later. So even from grade one, like I said, if you teach them how to infer, to predict, and, and based on data, remember we have to always predict based on data, not just some random predictions. And when you give a reason, are you able to say with some degree of certainty that uh, perhaps this could be a reason or will that reason be very, uh, you know, not based on the data, will it be very far-fetched? So that's a, actually a good uh, discussion to have around the data. Then it's not, um, you're kind of predicting and estimating and guessing, perhaps these could be the reasons. And are those reasons uh, valid when you see the data? Right, so yeah. So I think that, that was really nice. Thank you. Yeah, I'll just... Uh... Try to so Chitra is also, yeah, I think this is an interesting one. This is about the screen time. I hope everyone is able to see this. Okay. So suppose if we use this in our classroom, what are the kind of questions we can ask? Let's try to identify first what is given in this bar graph. What is exactly given? Anybody can speak. I know it's slightly blurry, but we can try reading it. Uh, anyone? So across three years from 2020 to 2022, uh, the number of video subscriptions has shot up. Yes, and there are paid subscriptions and uh, then uh, the blue color dis denote paid subscription and uh, the orange color denotes subscribing, subscribing households. households. Yes. Hmm. So in both so, the category, it has shot up. Yeah. And then we have a table also there, digital subscription, video, audio, and news. Which is the which segment is being uh, subscribed? That is all I can read. In 2020, 2021, 2022. Yeah. Any interesting questions you can ask using this data? Mm, may I please? Yeah, sure, please. Uh, video subscribe suggestion या फिर हम कहते हैं digital में सबसे ज़्यादा video और audio इन दोनों को जब हम analysis करते हैं तो इन पर सबसे ज़्यादा यानी number या जैसे हम करेंगे subscription सबसे ज़्यादा क्यों है ये पूछा जा सकता है या और जो news हम daily देखते हैं कि mostly हर कोई देखता है पढ़ता भी है लेकिन interest ज़्यादा video और audio में क्यों लिया गया है ये सबसे पहले हमारे सामने आता है और जितने भी यहाँ पर दिए गए ब्लू और रेड ऑरेंज में यानी पेड और सब्सक्रिप्शन पेड में सबसे ज्यादा क्यों है हम्म क्यों पेड क्यों लोग पे कर रहे हैं इसके लिए एनी रीजन आप लोग बता सकते हैं कैन यू गिव एनी रीजन वाई दीज पेड सब्सक्रिप्शन हैव इंक्रीज इन दीज लास्ट थ्री इयर्स we all know that we have experienced it <laughs> because yeah. of knowledge and information 
lockdown pandemic period lockdown pandemic, any yes, because everybody was at home <laughs> yes and then ah, we could not go out there was no other source of entertainment for us therefore everybody has logged into screens and they were willing to pay for it earlier we would not pay for not many people would like uh, yes. not to that extent people were not paying to that extent but the uh, now we are paying because the lockdown has become a reality yeah so let's see for more uh, graphs which were shared this is about uh, i think wipro's uh, wipro's q4 slip to way on stock but this traction this traction remains strong top it performance in march 22 quarter so they are giving i think shares kya i can't read very well this yes yes it's all about shares uh -huh. yeah it's uh, all uh, about uh, shares I, <laughs> i need my specs i've forgotten them somewhere also and it's slightly hazy also there is also some sequential dollar revenue growth percentage in march 21 june 21 seems to have shot up for wipro it has shot up 21 in, june 21 ha in june 21 it has shot up and then september 21 it decreased december 21 it it has decreased in march 22 it has decreased for many so this for four uh, organization denotes yeah. Uh, this yeah tcs, TCS infosys yes, hcl, HCL and, Wipro. and Wipro. yeah so i think this is for uh, analysis of you know how these companies are performing and you know what kind of dollar revenue growth is happening how is it increasing when when was it increasing when was it decreasing so if somebody wants to buy their I, shares perhaps this correct. would be so useful. here you can ask a different question here not so much about the content of the graph yeah but this is a timeline uh, you know trend yeah. if you see uh, what is the best representation usually for a timeline trend kind of trend or uh, you know uh, historical or uh, time kind of where time is involved i think mostly line graphs are made uh, right bindu yes yes ruchi so usually they say line graphs are a very nice way to represent because they uh, the line itself shows the trend very easily rather than a bar graph so actually this is something that what you could do is um, especially when you see a time graph like this you could ask them to plot it as a line graph and see is it you can compare these two and say which one is better readable and why you can use data like that so even if the content is too complex to discuss you can even take uh, you don't have to take so many of them right you can take two of them if not 3 4 5 and then even ask like if you ask the number of uh, different things increase is it uh, but is it more complicated to uh, to visually represent in a bar graph or in a line graph you can you can do those kinds of technical things also with graph to see which is the best fit like i told you with graphs it's not like um, you know you can uh, represent uh, you can choose anything you can use a bar graph you can do the line graph you can do other graphs also but which is the best one which easily describes the data so this would be interesting and how would it look visually would it be easier to read as a line graph you should check that with students and make them yeah. uh, do these comparisons also yeah i think that would be very interesting because one can visualize that for uh, wipro it would be going like this yes. for others it is mostly stable then declining so that would show yeah so very interesting uh, graph i would say uh let me see uh, yeah Oh, Aruna has uh, shared something related to Twitter. Let's see how how marketers use social media. This is a bar graph. So B two C and B two B. Yes. First, you need I to know what is B two C and B two B. 
yeah yeah no no i just shared this in the context of uh, elon musk buying out uh, twitter yes yes so uh, uh, i'm not too sure what b2c and b2b means either so uh, it's a business to business uh, and business to customer yeah okay so if your business is directly selling to the customer then it's b2c if a business is selling it to other businesses then it is b2b whatever okay. they're selling products yeah. services yeah. and so any interesting uh, conclusion or any interesting question seems like facebook seems to be highest here but for b2b why. linkedin is more yeah why more because it out uh, uh, most of the people uh, business people are using connecting yeah because linkedin's purpose is to connect uh, business yeah, people and then therefore businesses are using that and whereas facebook is much more uh, used by individuals to connect with other individuals and uh, perhaps it is more popular among uh, uh, young people and that's why facebook is more popular yeah then twitter is interesting just... interesting they haven't shown uh, instagram here because every yeah, uh, in every uh, unless instagram and facebook are combined or something because usually anyone i ask who's especially a small business person trying to find mm. customers they're all on instagram so it's an interesting uh, so media. you leave out some important uh, uh, you know uh, categories here and the uh, representation may become very highly skewed correct that's a good point ruchi this in this we could really Does that ask mean we are looking behind the data or are we exactly. looking beyond the data yes we are looking behind the behind the data yeah. also because who purposely is miss out this on thing do they want to purposely leave out instagram right because as uh, as uh, you, you know just as lay persons we know that uh, i'm aware that um, instagram is used much more by businesses what what does it do to this information because you've left out some key people in this and then you're looking behind the data and saying then who is putting up this and what is the motive they have to put up such a graph so yes you're right that is looking behind the data and to see what data is missing like what you say and even for uh, twitter they has said uh, i mean this graph indicates that b2b is more as compared to uh, facebook so uh, which uh, clientele this graph is uh, seems to be speaking to i mean is it trying to speak to both b2c and b2b or i mean it's speculative but we can think about it yeah so this was also quite interesting see there, there are so many interesting things uh, which are uh, these and, uh, uh, representations also, uh, in yeah. that in that bar chart beyond the data we can ask the owner of all that facebook twitter yes yes definitely so i'll stop my share so thanks a lot uh, for uh, you know uh, participating in this posting your uh, uh, bar graph there and having such an enri enriching discussions here uh, we really want you to come up with these kind of ideas and even design activities uh, you know beyond what is there in the textbook itself and that is the purpose of this uh, session itself so bindu any uh, last comments last suggestions you want to make to everyone no i think it was very interesting uh, come uh, you know coming up with the lesson also aruna and all of you participating and bringing the graphs i think just uh, looking at graphs we learnt a lot more uh, of what we can do with describing uh, data through from a graph and how important it is to make data based uh, uh, descriptions data based predictions uh, looking behind looking beyond data comparing uh, data and um, this uh, this really in, uh, interesting 
uh, participation and session. And thank you, Ruchi, so much for facilitating this. Uh, I got stuck in traffic and underestimated uh, my return time. Okay, so. it happens. It happens. Yeah. So uh, just as a uh, last thought, I would, uh, you know, uh, suggest to you that please also try to look at different kinds of data, you know, that you can use in the classroom, just like we have done for different bar graphs. There might be also different kinds of data available in newspaper on Google, which you can perhaps bring it into the maths classroom and can have very good uh, discussion. And using the data you can have a discussion what kind of graph would be appropriate to represent it visually because right now we started with a graph and then we tried to interpret it we need to do the other way around also we start with the data and we come up with a graph that represent it visually and there are lots of things that you know lots of things you have to keep in mind and there are a lot of uh, sort of uh, you say misconceptions or uh, problems also that happens when you try to represent it visually. Sometimes it is not appropriate and uh, students need to understand why. Just like uh, the ideas that we discussed today. So uh, thank you all for a very engaging, interesting session. I do hope you uh, encourage others um, as well as you also keep participating in the second part of the School Synergy Workshop series, because I think that these are the most valuable um, uh, contributions uh, to our uh, com uh, education community where teachers are uh, bringing in their experiences, uh, sharing their knowledge. So please keep on building this knowledge uh, in further uh, School Synergy Workshops. So that's all. Uh, bye for now. We'll meet again next week. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much for participating. Yeah. Bye bye.